The new tags in GrandMA 3 version 2.2 are a very powerful tool you can use in many different places and in many different situations. Let's first of all have a look where we find the new tags and afterwards we will have a look at some of the examples where you can use them to create and program your show. First of all, we want to add a new pool here because, surprise, surprise, the tags are organized in a pool. So we add a new window, go to the pool section and we have a look at this new one which is called tags. And here you can have different tags which you can use for different purposes. Let's have a look at the first example. First of all, tags can be a good organizing tool. So you can do a collection of several different objects like groups, presets, sequences to collect them all under a specific tag to assign appearances, for example. And you can also do it to use it as an organizing tool, especially regarding sequences, to use it for some playback purposes. First of all, how do we create a tag? We just store a new tag in this pool and for example this tag should be called my playback group. What we want to do with that is we want to assign some sequences and there are two ways of doing that. You can just use the swipey or the assign key and assign the tag directly to an object or you go to the edit settings and you have a menu where you can add new tag references here at the bottom left corner. So when we press this we can select all the different objects we have in our show. For example, we want to have a look at our look sequence, we want to have the song sequence as well, as well as the LED wall and LED steps sequences. So we assign all of these sequences to this tag, we can close this pop-up and we can see the tag one, my playback group, has now four different objects which are the four different sequences. Under the settings here you can find a few settings which are relevant for this tag. First of all what we want to have a look at is the option forward commands. This is by default enabled and it helps us now in many different purposes. So when we close this tag editor we can now see that this tag my playback group is stored and we have a small symbol at the objects here at the look sequence and all the other sequences where we assigned this tag to. What we can do now is to use commands like go, go back and off with this tag. So you can just press go and hit the tag and you can see all of the sequences which are assigned to this tag, they have a go command. Of course the same for the off command. So you can use it really as a busking tool and you can collect some of the sequences together to create a kind of playback group. The next example also has to do with the playback group. So we stay with the assignment of the four sequences we have over here, but we again have a look at the settings of our tag. There is one more setting which is relevant, which is called the tag type. And the tag type at the moment shows kill instant and kill delayed. So within this playback group, we can execute a kill action and it will be only relevant for the sequences which have this tag assigned. So for example, we put this to kill instance. We close everything and we see if we run the sequence and we run another sequence with the same tag, the first sequence will be killed and the second sequence is turned on now. So again for the other sequences you can see as soon as we hit a sequence from this relevant tag the other sequence will be killed. This is the kill functionality within that playback group we defined with the tag. Tags can not only be assigned to pool objects, but they can be assigned in many different places and many different menus around the whole GrandMA3 software. So they can be assigned to queues, for example. And that's a very powerful tool to change properties of specific queues you name with a tag. So what we do is we create a new tag here. And this time this tag is called our walk-in tag. So what I want to do with this, I want to set a specific fade time for all our walk-in queues around our whole show. So in many different sequences we have some walk-in queues and we name them with the tags. And then we want to change the fade time all at once. No matter if we move the queues afterwards or we rename them. 
So what we're going to do is to have a look at the first sequence, for example, and we scroll to the far right and here we can see the column tags. So here our first queue is the walk-in queue and we can assign the tag directly in here. We close the windows and then, for example, in sequence 4 we have a walk-in queue as well. And in sequence 4 we also assign this tag directly in here. Close that and have a look at sequence 2, for example. There the walk-in queue might be queue number 3. So we assign the tag directly in here as well. We close the window and now we can use some commands. We can write macros with that. So for example, what we can do is now set sequence through, so for all sequences, queue through for all the queues. And now we use the tag as the filter. So we use the if keyword and we define tag is the walk in tag. We want to set a queue fade of five seconds. So again, we set for all sequences, for all the queues, which are named with the tag walk in. So if tag is walk in, the queue fade of five seconds. So let's try if this works and let's have a look at our sequences. So here, the first queue re you remember, which was the walk in queue, got five seconds fade time, great. Now in the second sequence, we had the third queue. This got five seconds fade time as well. Wonderful. And we have queue fade of five seconds in our sequence number four as well. So for all the queues which have this walk in tag, we can now change the properties, no matter if we move or rename the queues, all at once using the tag as the filter. Let's imagine you are in a festival situation and of course you have a lot of incoming DMX protocol data like Artnet or streaming ACN inputs and you want to enable or disable them or change some settings of the incoming data lines. Therefore normally you would have to go in the network menu or in the DMX protocols and change the setting one by one. But now we can use the tags as well to get a collection of all our input Artnet and streaming ACN lines. So let's define a new tag here, which is, for example, our DMX input. Wonderful. Now we can use this tag to assign it to Artnet and streaming ACN lines. So we go to the menu and have a look at our DMX protocols. Here you can find the Artnet lines, for example, and you can find the column tags here as well. So what you can do is to assign this DMX input also for the second Artnet line. And of course, you could also do it for your streaming ACN line. So if you have incoming streaming ACN data, refer to the tags as well. So for all the input streaming ACN lines, we define the DMX input tag as well. What you can do with it is really simple. You can write some macros. You can use some command line syntax to enable or disable the lines or change the modes, change the settings you want to have, not by defining the Artnet and streaming ACN lines directly, but to use again the tags as a filter. Because then it doesn't matter if you move the DMX universes to a different place, if you give a different name for them, you can always refer to them using the tags as an organizing tool again.